TV. I'm Elisa, and today we're going to be playing with silk screens, and we're going to be creating a light switch cover, and then I'm going to show you some other things as well, because there are so many different things you can do with silk screens, and it happens to be one of my favorite techniques. So this is the silk screen design that we're going to be working with today, and this is an original polymer clay TV design, and this is not your typical size of silk screens. Um, this is actually the silk screen here, but you can't see it, so I'm showing you on a piece of paper. Um, most silk screens are maybe about this big, maybe even a little smaller. And when you have something that's small like that, it's hard to make something in one false fell swoop. And I like making light switch covers, and see, it's going to be bigger than a normal, you know, silk screen that you might find on the market, which there aren't very many people who make them, but when you do, they're usually generally smaller, is what I'm saying. This is nice and big so that you can do any kind of project your heart can, can desire. And we actually designed these so that they would actually be large enough to do a light switch cover, because I make a zillion of these. So you can actually go this way and get multiples as well. So you could probably get even three out of this if you, if you manage to get the clay big enough and, and uh, roll it out. But I'm only doing the one. So I, I started with conditioning a piece of, I believe this is the Wasabi clay. It's Primo brand. Uh, that's, Primo is my favorite brand to use, so that's what I go with. Now you can use any kind of paint. I'm going to use this cheap paint. But, you know, some people have problems with the cheap paint because it's runny. It's a liquidy paint that's, you know, it kind of just runs as you, as you pour it out. Whereas if you buy a little more expensive paint, it's thicker, has more pigments, and is not going to be as runny. But you can do it with this, and that's why I'm using this, because I want to show you that you can do it with this. And you don't have to go and spend a lot of money on expensive paint. You can use just, you know, a dollar a bottle one as well. Um, and this is just a metal light switch cover. You have to use metal. Um, some, people ha some people have used the plastic, but you know what? This plastic can melt, and I don't like taking a chance when these are readily available. So do, do yourself a favor. Get the metal ones. You can buy them at the, at the hardware store, and they're inexpensive. And the, the great thing about it is I use it as a template, and I use it as an armature when I'm baking, but then I can peel it right off when I have my solid clay light switch cover, and I can use this over and over and over till eternity. So do yourself a favor and get yourself one of those. I have a little um, armor all because it's warm here in Florida, so that's so that when we do make stuff, you know, it doesn't stick. And I have some butterfly cutters here. I have a clover cutter. I have some Gerbera daisies, and we're just going to play around and see what comes from this. Um, and then I also have these these eco um, stamps, which are like a plastic, uh, like a stiff plastic, and those are really cool too. So we're going to play with those, but first I want to show you the light switch cover. Oh, and here's a bracelet I made too. So that's another thing I want to talk about too, is that, okay, so I started with a white clay and black paint, and this is acrylic paint. You must use acrylic um, to, you know, so you can bake it. But, um, I, I realized afterwards that maybe I might, might want some color. So there are two ways that you can impart color onto these before you bake it and after you bake it. After you bake it, you can just come back with markers that, that will work on polymer clay and color it in and do anything you want. But before you bake it, you can use pan pastels, you can use powdered pigments, uh, anything you want, ink, you know, anything that that you know, tickles your fancy, you can go ahead and use. And this was done with pan pastels, and I did this before I baked it. So just something to think about, because you can add color, and you can just go crazy with this. That's the kind of project, you know, this is. So let me just move some stuff aside, and we're going to do a silk screen, and I'm going to do the overall design. So I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but there is a shiny side, and then a not-so-shiny side. The shiny side when you're silk screening always goes face down on your clay. Now, oh, and another thing that I wanted to tell you, because I've had this question before. Someone said to me, well, what if the paint's in my, in my uh, silk screen? You know, is it ruined forever? No. You want to wash it out really well, okay, after you use it. So once you use it, you can have a bowl of water here, and so you can just plop it in there and then run it to the sink and wash it out. Or you can just run it in the sink and wash it 
playing like that. But it's going to stain. That it's just the nature of the beast. You're going to get little stain marks from from the paint over time. It's just going to happen, so don't worry about it. As long as you wash it really well and you can see through it and see that that your design's still intact, you're fine. So don't get over excited about it if if if, if it's not there. You know, if there's a little bit of paint, it won't. It's not going to kill it. You know, you'll have plenty of uses out of this silk screen. So what you will need is a squeegee, or you'll need a credit card, an old credit card, or an old gift card. In fact, if you have a stiff piece of plastic, that would work really well. Like these eco stamps, that would actually work really well. I hadn't thought about it until now. So anyways, you may want to work on some parchment paper. And let's do that because this is it does get messy with, with the paint. Sorry about that. So here, let me pick this all up and put it on the parchment paper. That way we can quick move it out of the way without having a giant mess. And so I'm going to just lay this, like I said, shiny side down. And if you wanted to get a specific part of the design in that you make sure you get in, you know, just line it up. And you want to smooth it down so that there's no air pockets between the clay and the self screen. That's important. And what I usually do is kind of give it a little light brush like this with my... I'm not putting pressure on I'm just trying to make sure that there's no air pockets. So shake up your acrylic paint, whatever color you choose, you know, whatever brand you choose, if you want to use, like I said, the more expensive, you can you can do it. Don't worry about it. And so I just put some paint there. This is a big piece, so I'll probably need it more. And don't feel like you can't add more. Okay, so when I start, I'm going to start to pull it across. That's the idea, so that it gets into all those little dots. But if I find out that I have, don't have enough, I can always add more. And if I find out I have too much, then I just pull it off. You'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to go right across, and you can see how I'm doing it more than once. You don't have to just do it once. You can do it multiple times to make sure that you get it. And just cover and saturate the whole piece so that wherever the silk screen is. And see, and I have extra. So I want to make sure to get off most of my, ink, most of my paint like this in, before I peel it up so that it's not gloppy, okay? I, uh, speaking of gloppy, I got a little on the side there. So then you want to slowly peel back and you will reveal your design. How unbelievably gorgeous is that? So at this point, you want to run to the sink and get this washed and that's exactly what I'm going to do and I will be back in a second. So while that's drying, I wanted to just talk a little bit, a little bit about adding color and you can do that before or after you bake and after you bake you would use markers now your markers need to be the kind that will stay on you know polymer clay and so I've had luck with these metallic markers and you're gonna have to test different markers that you have in your stash and see what works you know each marker is made a little different so basically you would just pretend like you're coloring I mean, it's that easy to do. You just color in the lines or outside of the lines, whatever you prefer. And you want to make sure that you don't touch it when you're doing this, because if you touch it, you know, you can you take the chance of, of making you know, your design not look as pretty. So just color in, and then you can go back and add highlights, anything you want. Um, you could even paint. You know, since this is already acrylic paint, if you wanted to add paint, you could do that too. You can use powdered pigments, you can use ink, and uh, you, you would do uh, the pigments before you break, the powdered pigments before you bake it, and you would also do the ink, like um, either a dye ink if you wanted to, to use like um, alcohol ink, or if you wanted to use, say, pigment ink, I would do those before I baked it. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of, I got no rhyme or reason here. I'm just having fun coloring in. But yeah, so do what you like and and uh, you'll get some really cool results, you know. I, I just like to, to doodle. That's what I'm calling it, like a doodle here. And you can see that it takes the, the, the markers really nicely and you can just 
totally customize a piece this way and you know make it really really pretty I really like the way these metallic markers look and you know I found these mar markers I think if I remember correctly these are by American Crafts found them at TJ Maxx for like three or four dollars for a whole set of these so that was a real steal and so check your TJ Maxx if you happen to have a TJ Maxx I know I don't know if they're outside of the country but in in the USA they're all over the place and you know what this is a neat way too. if say your silk screen kind of went astray and maybe there was extra marks you might want to think about you know you could cover it up with a, with with painting it you know with markers too look at how pretty that is I love it and it just gives it like a painterly look you know because I don't know it's I just love it so have fun with trying this technique you know adding the uh, inks adding the pigments adding markers and just kind of have fun with it and uh, you know let it let it flow so now my paint is dry and I went ahead and filmed making this particular one and my camera jammed up so I had to start over with a different color because I'm out of this color so it's, it's gonna be the same obviously the same technique but it's gonna be a little different color so anyways on this one here it's out of the oven it's solid clay I removed it from from the the metal light switch and I added some little flat some little um, butterflies and all I did was cut them out of my leftover piece because remember I said save all your extras and all you have to do is is find the design you like give it a push down and I'm not imparting the design of the stamp on there I'm just using the stamp to cut it out I don't want to add you know the lines and stuff you certainly can you know you can do that but I just went, went for that look so so this is the finished piece and um, I'm going to show you on the blue how I made the light switch cover like I said I don't have any more of that but it's the same thing but this is a flower that I made and I use these eco stamps and this was also on the other video but you know like I said I lost <laughs> so what I did here was I took whatever leftover clay I had, I punched out some circles, right, as you can see here, and I put, I laid my silk screen design on top of a sheet of red clay, as you can see here from the back. I impressed the red clay with the design using a little armor oil, armor all so it didn't stick, and then I just cut out the pieces I needed. And here I used a bigger round cookie cutter and then a smaller one like this plunger one here and then this here in the middle was one of the little Gerbera daisies and then I took one of the metal stamps that's a flower and put a little red clay there stamped it added a crystal and then added a little piece that I can now slip it right onto a necklace very simple to do and really fun and cute but to get these circle after you get these circles all you want to do is pinch in the bottom to create a petal shape it's that simple and by adding the the red on the back or whatever color you use and, and texturing it you've got it looks beautiful on both sides so that's the point of that so let me move this out of the way and let's make this light switch cover so you guys can see how that's made and let me tell you it may look difficult but it is not difficult to do this this is super easy and, and even a beginner can do this so once you, you have your, your design, your silk screen design, and it's completely dry, you want to make sure it's completely dry, you want to pick whatever design area you want on your light switch. And then you want to line it up right on top of the metal light switch. And I think I'm going to go more towards the top here. And you can see on the back that it, you just got to make sure that it's covered, covering the um, metal switch all the way. Now. When I have a bunch of extra, I like to cut it off because then you can see you can make other things with it. So I'd rather not waste it, you know, by making it scrap. I'm going to cut it off and then use it for another project. So look at how much beautiful stuff is still left. So you make sure you want to save that and cut it, you know, as close as you can that you feel comfortable. So once I have this on here, you can see it's got the opening where you turn the light on and then it's got where the screws go. So you need to actually cut those out so obviously that you can utilize it and I use an exacto blade to cut out the middle part 
I find it to be the easiest way to do it. You can also use a single edge razor blade, but you want something small. Your big giant blade is too cumbersome for this. So just start by butting your blade right up against the metal light switch and going straight down. And you can feel this as you're going and do the same all the way around. And then afterwards, you can pull it right out. So then I just want to pull it out with my blade. If there's any extra, obviously, you can cut it again. And then I like to come back with a knitting needle and kind of smooth it out like so. That just smooths the edges so they're not rough. And you can turn it over and make sure it's smooth on the other, uh, other side. And you can do that just by running it like that. Now, we need to poke the holes. Now, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the silk screen design does not come off of the plate because then your lines and things won't, won't line up. So I just twist my knitting needle like so and then come back over from the other side and do the same thing, twist. Now once I feel it go all the way through, I want to kind of work it in a circular motion like this because you want to make sure the entire hole is removed out like so. And sometimes there'll be a little extra clay there so you might have to take that off as well. So again, and I have my finger braced right there, so I don't want it to go all the way, I just want it to go a little bit through, I don't know if you can see that, because if you go and push it all the way through in one fell swoop, you have the chance of, you know, making the clay crack, or what, I mean, mine's conditioned really well, but it's just better to do it, you know, in little bits. And this one had a little bit of extra clay, so you want to remove that, make sure that it looks nice on both sides. So now that we have our holes cut out, we just want to trim it to the size of the plate. Now, if you need to stretch it a little, you can do that gently. I like to bend it a little so that it comes all the way over the side because a lot of light switch covers, you know, maybe don't have these rounded edges. So you want to make sure it fits them all, and that's the way to do it. Now, now I can go back to the single edge blade, which I really like for this, and kind of just run it along here and remove that. Save all your little pieces. And then the corners can be a little tricky, but that, the single edge blade really helps. And you can get these at the hardware store. I'm not the hardware store, the, the drug store. I mean, really, they're used for shaving, so they're easy to find. And they come in a pack, um, a multi-pack usually, for very inexpensive. So there's no special brand, just any single edge razor blade. And just continue to clean it up and kind of have it you know, flush with the side. And the last side, this should do it. Then you want to go back around and smooth any edges that might have gotten a little messed up. You can use your finger to do that. And it is ready for the oven. How cute is that? And how simple was that? So, but yet it looks like I spent a zillion years on this but it's so pretty so effective and you can do it in any color here it is in the green here it is in white and in the white as you saw earlier I used magic markers to paint that um, like I said you can do it before with powdered pigments or with before you bake it with powdered pigments or ink or whatnot um, you can leave it as is you know, the sky's the limit, really. Just have fun with it. You can add, you know, embellishments like I did here with the butterflies. You can create pieces with the silk screens like pendants. You can do boxes. You can do anything, anything at all. Here's a bracelet that I made. That was fun. And that's just on a metal bracelet plank that I found at Michael's. You can do double light switch covers. You can do triple light switch covers. Anything you, you need, go to the hardware store. They probably have it for you. So, so that was a fun project, super easy, and I know you're going to have a blast with it. So have fun with this project, and uh, don't forget we have Polymer Clay Adventure going on still. It's a year-long retreat, and uh, there's still tons of classes left, and still many classes have been released already, so you can check that out at polymerclayadventure.com. And all the supplies that I've used you can find at polymerclaytv.com, like all the cutters, and uh, whatnot like that, the silk screens, the, the stamps, you can find them all at Polymer Clay TV. So have fun with this, and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me.